Hello and welcome back to Sharks Happen. My name is Hal, I'm your host, going over shark attacks from the 1900s till present, mostly large sharks. We'll get started right away. Head over to Oak Island, North Carolina. The date, June 14th, 2015. Kirsten Yao, 12 years old. Uh, she's out with some friends. They're out in the water waiting in about waist high, just above waist high water. Um, about 20 yards from shore I have seen and it's about 4.30. She's bumped in a leg. Uh, she bumped in a leg and she said that she felt the contact again. And I'm wondering if she felt the bite the second time because she got bit in the leg. She reached down and she punched the shark three times. But on the third one, it grabbed onto her arm, tugged her down into the water. Um, bit her arm off below the elbow and she was able to make her way to the beach. Uh, there was some uh, medically trained people on the beach and they were able to put a tourniquet on her right away and staunch the bleeding on her arm and on her leg and uh, and she ended up surviving. She spent 30 days in the hospital for that leg and they weren't sure at first if she was going to keep it or not. Uh, as far as details, uh, again we don't have any. We don't even have, you know, they give us that it was bit from like um, the, the hip um, down to the posterior of her thigh which tells me nothing as far as dimensions. Uh, we don't get dimensions of teeth that we normally get. We don't get any arc. We don't get nothing. So uh, again, another uh, you know U.S. vacation town and no information from the the experts and scientists at the International Shark Attack file. And we'll get to what they did with these two kids' um, attacks in a minute. About nine, 90 minutes later, Hunter Tressel, uh, 16 years old, he's standing in about waist deep water. He's with his cousin, and he gets bumped. And he says he figured it was a large fish. You could tell it was a large fish, but it bumped him again. He's trying to move back away from it. And the shark had grabbed his arm and he says the first grabbed his hand and started biting and started biting his way up. And he says the first he saw the shark was it had come out of the water to bite up his arm. It bit him all the way up above the elbow and then bit that off. And uh, he also made it to the beach. He also got the medical attention he needed. The same paramedic was called to both of these. Uh, the guy said he was stunned that it happened again. So what are the odds of that same paramedic going to pick up two kids within 90 minutes at the beach that both lost part of their arm? And, uh, and like I said, Kirsten with the leg that got attacked. Uh, again, no information on that one. He ended up surviving also. Both are taking it very well, better than I would. Um, but uh, the shark attack file, we got to get into that real quick. Up, uh, the non-information is, you know, we already know that that's going to happen. But uh, they have a spot in their in their attacks called environment. This sets up the conditions. It'll tell you what the conditions were, how the water was, how the how the clarity was, everything. Well, they also use that spot to set up excuses, and that's what started me on wondering about this site. And I started seeing a lot of stuff where I'm like, why is that even in there? So I started paying attention to them a little bit, but nothing like what happened two days ago when I did that story, the stories on the keys, um, that was, I did those three key stories because I have two sisters and my father are down there. Um, my two sisters run a med spa called M M Miller Medicine down there. And uh, I wanted them to know about these attacks. And I kind of want them to know that, you know, they're not being honest about attacks. So uh, I, that just ended up happening. And then the next day I, uh, was looking for an attack to throw into the file and I ran across that one and in the shark attack file and the wording was the same as in my book because I remembered most of the attack wording in those books and I'm like this is the same as that and then I read it and I looked and saw what they had taken out and I was stunned but this is even worse. Uh, so two kids are in the hospital. This is That was June 14th. June 15th, this investigator from the IA, ISAF, International Shark Attack File, goes down there to check things out and to tell us what happened. You know, so he doesn't give us anything. An investigator that doesn't ask questions is not a good investigator. You can't even ask what kind of a wound, how deep were the cuts, anything. So here's what the investigator was doing while everybody else was worried about the kids. Uh, here's the setup on the, on the environment section. You can look up Kirsten Yao and read their, read their whole report. It is sickening. Uh, the incident took place near the pier and a blogger on a local news site said her husband. So a blogger on a local news site's husband. We got the brother's ex-girlfriend's friend saying stuff now. 
uh, was told there was some kayak fishing near pier two days prior. Um, and they were chumming. Another blogger, these bloggers are pretty good at uh, cracking cases. Another blogger says he, was, he has seen sharkers fishing at a nearby beach and an SUV had a sticker on it that said it was a website for shark fishing. And then it says right here. So now here's the thing. They should be out figuring out what the shark behavior was. What is the International Shark Tech Files investigator doing? He goes to the Oak Town manager, the mayor and the beach commissioner, and they confirm the chumming. Now the problem here that I have with this is I spent an hour and a half last night. I went through, I counted 22 sites, read every one of them. I can't find a single thing I'm fishing on any of them. This is made up. And this isn't even good enough because the story ends, they go through the species, the, which they don't know the species, the, the, the injury, which they'll tell you the injury, but they ain't gonna tell you any dimensions. And then uh, at the very bottom, it repeats. This guy repeats, on June 15th, Monday, June 15th, I met with the Oak Town Mayor, the Commissioner, and, and the, the beach guy, and they come from the chumming, and he gets done with his spiel, and he says, I recommend that there be uh, regulations put in against chumming at the beach. The imaginary chumming at the beach. International shark attack file is the worst. Um, they're done with me. Uh, they're, 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 they're garbage. They're garbage just like most things I see coming out of the hypothetical world, theoretical world of universities. We'll move on. Okay, now we head over to Inhambane Bay, which is in Mozambique. The date is October 17, 2015. Uh, Al Albertina Cavell, she is 35 years old, mother of two. She's out doing her, um, her job. She goes out and fishes. She's out collecting shrimp with friends at the time uh, that she has attacked. There isn't really a lot of details on, on how far out she was, where she was. Uh, just that when they brought her into shore, she had a, a pretty major wound to her, to her rear end. It bit her in the rear end. That's about it. And then uh, transferred her to a hospital, but she died shortly after she uh, went there. So we'll put this thing down as a, uh, an attack. No predation. And uh, that's her story, Albertina Cavill. We're gonna head out to Alkenstrand Beach, which is in South Africa. The date is August 11th, 2009. Giandra Nagel, he is out doing some surfing, and at the time he's paddling back in his shore. He must be in pretty deep water because he's hit from underneath the board as he's paddling. The board is hit, and he is thrown up off the board, and he swims back to the board as fast as he can, gets on it, and takes takes and gets a wave in the shore. He ended up with, uh, with just a board that has a bite mark in the front end of it. It looks like the front end of it. And uh, pretty small shark, uh, two meter great white. Um, the teeth marks look pretty small. Um, smallest set of teeth mark I've, I've seen indented into a board yet. Um, so he survives as a, an attack and no injury, no predation, um, you know, uh, it's weird that the little guys will do that because they're not ready to be eating seals for till they double in size from that size. So I don't know what he was thinking. Um, maybe he was just playing, maybe he was just interested, or maybe he was going to see if he couldn't take out a, a, a piece of a dead dead sea lion. He probably thought that's what it was, but you know, um, smaller guys that hit those boards, I don't know what they're doing. The other guy that got hit by the board like that, it bit his arm as it bit the board, but he flipped up and landed off the board and rolled off the side. So they're a little uh, unpredictable, those little ones. Um, the bigger ones, when they're 10, 12 feet, when they're starting to eat, they're, they're you know massive hits. And uh, the injuries can be pretty bad just from them getting a hold of you. But the little guys, uh, they must be just... Uh, you know, wanting to do what the big guys are doing, wanting to be one of the big boys. But that's an attack, no predation, no injury. And now we're gonna head over to Little Brack River, Western Cape Province, South Africa. The date, December 28th, 1927. Oak Kurt Haynes, 17 years old. He and some three friends, they're out swimming. Uh, when a shark, they see a shark and they all start swimming in the shore. Uh, three of them make it in and when they're in about five high deep water, um, I don't know how they were going. If they, I would think they would be swimming, but you know, if it's thigh high, you might try to run. I'm not sure. But a shark, great white, got into one of them waves, 
and it helped that great white overtake him, caught up to him and bit him. Uh, it severed his leg uh, seven inches above the knee and it partially severed, almost completely severed his other foot. So uh, they got him into the beach. The, the beach goers there ran out, the, ran out into the water, scared the shark away right away. There's blood in the water. They grab Oakert, get him into, get him into shore, try to stabilize him. And by the time he gets to the hospital that night, um, I believe, you know, seven o'clock, somewhere around there, he ended up passing away from his wounds. Um, a very quick attack, taking a leg and almost a foot and also took his life. We'll put it down as an attack, uh, not an attempt to predate. And that's our story of Oakert Haynes. You know, we're going to head over off the coast of California, um, off Castle Rock near Westcott Shoal. The date, December 9th, 1994. James Robinson, 42 years old. Uh, he is helping his boat position itself over sea urchins. They're sea urchin collectors, fishermen. He's going to tell the boat where to position itself so that they're in the best spot to be bringing these up. And he goes down for the first dive, checks out the area, comes back, tells them where to, to be, and then he goes back down again. And uh, the two mates on the boat are busy doing work, and all of a sudden they hear James getting onto the boat. He had screamed, and they turned around, and he's trying to pull himself up on the dive step. He's struggling to do so, so they help him up and help him up onto the boat, and he says, a shark hit me. They had looked into the water, saw a big pool of blood, you know, a few meters wide. Uh, they figured he'd probably been hit when he was down under the water because of the way that the blood was not up at the top of the water. But anyway, they get him on the boat and he has a monster bite. They said 45 centimeters of arc from his hip involving his uh, waist a little bit and onto his leg. He didn't make it, he passed away. Uh, the, the damage was just too great and two kids that worked for him, they didn't know what to do uh, as far as staunching the blood and with the, with the wound there's no real way to put a tourniquet on there to be able to fix it. Once they get into the hip area where you lose the place where you can wrap around the leg, you're, you're in trouble. Um, so that unfortunately happened to James. Uh, a couple of his friends, uh, a couple other divers spoke about it. Um, one of them said they say it's like a bullet. You never see the one that hits you. And it's, that's urchin diver uh, Jeffrey Gunning. He says, I just hope that Jim, Jimmy went peacefully. Uh, and then uh, another friend diver, Steve Rubuck, uh, Rebuck says, uh, if you are frightened by it, you have no business being in the business. Um, and then he talks about how many people are killed by lightning and bee stings. Uh, The, they did talk to one marine biologist and he had said that sharks sometimes attack humans out of curiosity and sometimes confuse uh, wetsuits clad divers for, for seals. Uh, that's marine biologist Gary Davis. Um, that's an accurate statement. I like that. There's nothing wrong with that statement. Um, no need to make an excuse for the shark. It just was an attack and it was the wrong place, wrong time. And uh, you know, like the diver said, if you're worried about it, then you're in the wrong business anyway. But that's why I'm not in the business. I'm not in the water. So <laughs> those divers are a different uh, mindset from me. So that's our last uh, attack. We're going to get into what the hell next. Okay, now we're going to head out uh, to Florida in 1916. Uh, there's a gentleman, J.L. Hanscom. Uh, he was helping fishermen pulling a net. So he's helping them pull up a net. I don't even know if he works for a fisherman. But it says J.O. was helping these fishermen pull in a net, and they saw that there was a, a huge shark in there, a big shark, they say. And J.L. decided he was going to jump in the net and try to take the shark alive, I guess. So he jumps into this net to try to kill the shark, and the shark ravages his leg. And uh, by the time they get him out of there and get him to, the, to any help, he passes away. So what the hell were you thinking? <laughs> that is one of the stupidest things. <laughs> That's our show for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, 
And I wanted to get that out there. I wanted to show you the last thing that I found about the international shark attack file. That's, that's the end of us talking about that site. Uh, they're done with me. So <laughs> we will see you in the next few days with another, another full episode of attacks. But until then, if you go in that water, you are much more afraid of those sharks than they are of you.